Hey guys, this is a web view on high speed rail. Now before I get into this web view, I'd like to propose a deal with my viewers. Half of my viewers have been yearning for web view to go international and they were pleased when I proposed the Trans Pacific vacuum tube then connecting from Los Angeles to Hong Kong. However, there are many other people who still think that I should do more web views in the USA especially the high-speed rail link between New York and Texas. So what I'm going to do is, for every web view I publish in the USA, I will publish another web view in an international location. Yes, that means I will have double the amount of web views in the same time and don't be surprised if I have two web views in a single week, but I think it's possible and I think such a solution will benefit all my viewers not to mention have a more diverse field of viewers and types of proposals. This web view is on the next section of the high speed rail mega project. It connects Columbus, Ohio with Cincinnati, Ohio. It'll have three, no, actually four stops in the middle at Springfield, Dayton, Middletown and Sharonville I-275. Now before I get into this web view, let's do two things first. I'm introducing a slightly new color scheme for the high speed rail. Basically nowadays what blue means is high speed rail on existing tracks. The most that will have to be done is adding a second track to a single track line and or curve straightening a, a section. However, sections in magenta require much more construction because these are brand new sections often major curve straightening or curve cutting or making viaducts over heavily populated areas and streets so that's what those two colors mean another thing is i was planning on making the line actually go this way as you can see there's an existing line that connects via washington courthouse and then continues southwest through clinton county through Cincinnati that way. However, there were two main problems. One, the entire line here was only one track. Now this line was one track until Springfield and then after that it became two tracks. Second, but probably more importantly, it would serve no populated areas between Cincinnati and Columbus. High speed rail is meant to serve people not to bypass their houses and all their areas. So I instead made the line around 10 to 20 miles longer, but it serves much more populated areas and the overall cost of the line is much reduced because not all sections will have to be upgraded to a dual track line. Now this line will be 300 kilometers per hour, some sections from 200 to 250 kilometers per hour and it should be electrified like always because this is an ultra fast high speed line. So let's begin. The first stop is Columbus Central. It will continue under the city through the tunnel that the existing light rail will go on. But then it will exit to the west past the Franklinton district and it will generally parallel Interstate 70 as it goes at speeds of up to 300 kilometers per hour. If there's some crossings here, I believe these crossings are not grade separated. They'll be grade separated, but I didn't bother to make the line magenta because they're nothing too major. There are much more major areas than that. And basically for the next 35 miles, the line will be like this. However, when you get to London, Ohio, that's where it gets interesting. All these roads here are not grade separated from the railway line. It's all just grade crossings. So in addition to making the line double track, I'm going to make a big viaduct here, probably just a ground viaduct, like elevating it on a plateau, not really making a full bridge, if you know what I mean. And that will also add some curve straightening to the line while keeping its full speed. After London, Ohio, it will continue generally paralleling Interstate 70, actually crossing it just before Springfield. 
And the next section, now this is probably one of the most expensive sections of the line because all this section here will have to be grade separated and elevated on not really a wide dirt, but if you know, if a raised ground, if you know what I mean. If you can come up with a better word than that, please leave it in the comments, but raised ground. So it can easily go over the roads without much disturbing the local environment in the area. Springfield will be a high speed rail local stop, which means that the ultra fast high speed trains will not stop here, but the regional high speed will. This is done so that more communities along the line will be served as well, rather than shunning all small towns out in favor of only big cities. Not to mention this is close to Interstate 70, so it's a good easy access from there as well. After Springfield, the line will continue on its elevated viaduct until just before Route 68 in which it returns back to ground level and now the line is two tracks. However, just past Riverdale, we have another section here. We have to go over a creek here. So the existing line goes like this. What I decided, just make the line go straight. We'll require two bridges over this creek to do that one here and one here. But if that's done, we can maintain high speeds without unnecessary slowing down. Line still runs at its full speed here. And now the line's two tracks, as I said. However, there's a big bottleneck at Dayton. When the line enters Dayton, the line will have to slow down to 230 kilometers per hour through these curves here near the Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Now I'll tell you why. I was sick of making a line go directly like this. It would hurt too many businesses and or it would be too much to build. So why not just follow the existing line, slightly lower the speed, but drastically lower the cost. It's the exact same words I have said many times in my very first web view from New York to Boston. So the line will continue at 230 kilometers per hour into Dayton. Now Dayton is very, I basically the line is so curvy that you have, if you want trains to pass through here, they'll go through 100, 100 kilometers per hour. And obviously if they stop at Dayton, they stop at Dayton. Now I would like to ask in a comment section, do you think Dayton should be a ultra fast high speed train or only regional high speed trains should stop here? Because anyways, the ultra high speed trains would anyways have to slow down to 100 kilometers per hour. Not to mention Dayton is still a relatively large city with good economic potential. So leave that in the comment if you think that Dayton should be an ultra high speed stop, but as of now, I made it a regional high speed stop. The ultra high speed trains will go through at 100 kilometers per hour. Notice that there's no magenta. This is all actually elevated above the existing roads. That is so nice. We don't have to worry about that here. After crossing the river, it'll go past Interstate 75 and at 100 kilometers per hour turn south and then go at its full speed again at 300 kilometers per hour as it parallels now Interstate 75 south. However, at Miamisburg, there's a short section where a earth raised viaduct will be required to go past those roads. And just past Miamisburg, the line will have to slow down to 250 kilometers per hour to pass this hill here without much costs added. And then after that, it'll cross the same river again and continue south. Now this is back at 300 kilometers per hour. It gets ever closer to Cincinnati. The next stop is Middletown. Similar situation to Springfield in that Middletown will be on a viaduct and it's a new location serving a more regional area along the Interstate 75 corridor. It will continue now at 250 kilometers per hour, increasing back to 300 kilometers per hour right after Middletown as it enters the northern Cincinnati suburbs. 
just north of Interstate 75 at this bend right here. I think the line should decrease speed to 250 kilometers per hour, so not much cost will be added in these hills here. As you can see, the line has to curve around the many hills and suburbs in the area. So I, was, I decided not to make this tunnel through all that. Not only would it be more expensive, would it be less interesting, honestly. Who wants to be a tree in a train in a tunnel all the time, rather than just flow with the hills and scenery? So that's what I did. The next stop is Sharonville I-275. It's a nice place for all the northern suburbs of Cincinnati to get together right near the interchanges of Route 71 and 75 so it's very easy access from the entire northern Cincinnati area to go back north or in future to go southwest to Texas where this line will eventually head. Also at Sharon will be, there will be a small viaduct section and curve straightening as the line will require viaducts over Kempter Road and Reading Road. Still at its speed of 250 kilometers per hour now at Arlington Heights, the line will have to go through another viaduct section here. And it will continue, basically it's paralleling Interstate 75 now at 250 kilometers per hour. All of this is grade separated, thankfully. And it's double track, so it's nothing much more than just electrifying and maybe sprucing up the railway ties for this and you have a line to go. Now it enters the Cincinnati yard here. It will just follow two tracks. I'll only designate two tracks so the good strains will require will not will keep most of the same tracks. And the line ends, or not ends, but we will we'll end this segment at Cincinnati. Obviously the line will continue on to Louisville, Nashville, and so on, but as of now I ended it at Cincinnati. That's the line. Speeds varying between 200 and 300 kilometers per hour. Quite a few viaduct sections here and there, but it serves a lot of densely populated areas that are good candidates of high-speed rail. Thank you and goodbye.